Kittle is known for its world-class graphics, templates, and awesome designs. In this video, I'm going to walk through five ways that you can manipulate graphics. Some of them are relatively intuitive, but some of them you may not have heard of before. Let's jump in. All right, the first thing I want to show is the AI background remover. I'm in my project. I've got my template, and on the left-hand side, I'm going to click on Photos, and I'm just going to use a photo here that's in the library. I'm going to scroll down. I'm going to find this one here. I'm going to make it a bit bigger. Now, when I click on the photo itself, I'm going to see over on the right-hand side, there's an AI background remover, and when I click on it, it simply just loads in. It's removed the background, and check that out. When I zoom in underneath the girl's arms, you'll see the background even there was removed. The little tiny slivers were also removed. It truly becomes a transparent background. That's a pretty cool feature. So I highly recommend the AI background remover for photos and other illustrations. The second way you can manipulate graphics is through border weight and it works on vectors. So here I've got a vector down at the bottom and I have a border weight option right there on the right hand side. So when you click on it, you'll see it pop up. So if you're working on a non-vector graphic like the flowers at the top, you're not going to see that border weight come up. It needs to be on a vector only. So I'm going to get rid of the flowers. I'm only going to work on the vector, which is the arrow here. And when I see it on the right hand side, the border weight has a little no smoking sign set up. And when I move the border weight more, you may not see anything happen. And the reason for that is because the border weight, the color right there, is the same as my background color. So I need to change the border weight. I'm going to make it red, for example. And now you'll see it'll pop up. When I click on the image, you'll see the border weight is red, the background is gray, and the vector itself is black. So you can ma manipulate this graphic by changing the border weight and making it fatter or skinnier or even non-existent. But that's a really nice feature if you're making sticker designs or you'd like some sort of an outline on your actual design. You can change the color of it very easily. The third way you can manipulate graphics, and it's pretty easy, is the opacity slider. So here I've got a graphic set up. I've got a witchy lady here in the middle, and then I've got a bunch of flowers, and I've got a background with some smoke. So I'm going to manipulate the opacity in this graphic. So the first thing I'm going to do is click on the witchy lady here, and we can see the opacity shows up. You can just move this now as a slider, and you can make it less or more. Just moving the opacity can radically change the way a graphic looks. You can see there now, she looks much more ethereal. And you can do the same thing here with the flowers as well. You can manipulate the graphics to basically blend in to the smoky background. And I think this can look really nice, even lowering the opacity by even say 20% or 25%. It's like that 75%. If you go all the way down to like only 25%, so you've reduced it by 75%, can make the design look really radically different. I recommend trying this out, monkeying around with it with, say, a smoke background or some sort of a textured background because it can really blend in to the overarching design. It can look really cool. Another easy way to manipulate graphics is with blending modes, and these work with images and photographs. So here I've got my template set up, and I've got a cat picture. And you'll see over on the right-hand side there's a blending mode, and it says normal, and then you can look at other blending modes here, for example, like multiply. Now, if you're using this just on a regular background and you select something like multiply, you may notice it just disappears. And it's because the background is too dark. So what you'd want to do is start off with a lighter background and you'd want to have some sort of a picture that it's blending onto. So I'm going to go here to the left-hand side under textures and I'm actually going to click on backgrounds, which is on the right-hand side. And from here, I'm going to pick just the first background. I'm picking something here at random. So here's a bunch of waves. Now that I've got my cat design. I'm going to make them nice and big here. Now when I do the blending mode and I go say color burn for example, he's blending into the background. And now you can toggle through the different blending modes. Color burn, multiply, overlay. There's all sorts of really funky designs that you can do. I'm just going to remove out the background here really quick. So I'm going to click delete and I'm going to pick another background. I'll pick a clouds one here for example. We can see it completely changes the look and feel of the design because the picture is blending into the background. Another way you can manipulate graphics is to remove one color. So here, this is a cat picture I've got set up with a green background. Now I may just want to remove the background, but I may also just want to remove some or all of the green color. So how do I do that? So when I click on this image, you're going to see on the right-hand side, a remove color option shows up. Now it's turned off. There's a little no smoking sign there that's set up. So what you'll want to do is click on the color button 
and then you can select a color. Now what I'm going to do is select this little eyedropper tool and I'm going to pick one of the green specks around the cat. I'm going to pick right here for example. So now the color has been selected and I can change the intensity of what I'm trying to remove by simply moving the slider along. When I move it along, the more I move it, the more it eventually will remove everything. So the color, in this case green, becomes a primary set and it uses a mathematical formula to try to remove some or all of the color. You'll notice the eyes eventually start disappearing and the actual cat starts disappearing. So it's pretty neat. I can select a different color. I'll simply select the image. And in this case, I'll pick a completely different color here. How about red? And when I pick that, you'll notice there's not a lot of red in the design. So when I up the intensity, you'll notice there's not a lot of stuff disappearing. And then eventually it'll pick up the brown because that's the closest to the red. And then eventually the whole cat will disappear. All right, and there's a bonus method here that I want to show you and it's cropping. It's pretty neat to do, it's pretty easy. So here I've got a photograph of a cat set up. There's no crop feature on the right hand side, but all you need to do is just double click the photo and all of a sudden now the crop feature opens up. I can simply drag this down and I can see now my design is now cropped. Double click and then you can change the cropping of the design. You can make it as big or as little as you want. There it is. When you double click again, you, the entire image is also in the background. So you can, if you have cro over cropped, you can compensate by bringing back some of the design as well. There's another way you can crop a design and it's a bit more complicated, but what I'll do here is in the background, I'm going to make the background color the same as the picture. So I'm going to go background color. I'm going to pick the eyedropper tool and I'm going to click the, right near the edge. I'm going to pick some blue. Now what I can do is I can create a shape. So I can go over to the left hand side, click on elements, click a basic shape, make that the same color as what I want to crop. So right here at the top, and then I can move this up and I can move it over and I can basically crop like this. So if you're, if it's all one color, you can crop a design that way as well. You may want to do this if you're using more arty designs where you don't want to necessarily crop just the edge. Maybe you want to crop in the middle like this and then have some text in the middle. So there's an example how you could crop something pretty close to the color that you want. I'm going to make it the exact background color in this case. So I'm going to select object color, eyedropper, select the background, and now it's exactly the same color as the background. So that's another way you can kind of crop in the middle of a design as well. I really hope you found this walkthrough helpful. I love using Kittle. I'll put a link to Kittle in the video description below. Just a heads up, it is an affiliate link and that just means if you click on the link and you purchase the Kittle subscription, I would receive a small commission. Here's another video on how you can supercharge your print-on-demand journey using the superpowers of Kittle.